your uh, email, and it will also contain the contact information of both the presenters. So let's get started here. Uh, results is an award-winning customer relationship management and business management solution. It uh, integrates with QuickBooks, has a great reputation in the QuickBooks community, been uh, working with QuickBooks for years. Uh, as I said, it's a market leader for QuickBooks, and it enables companies to build amazing business relationships and automate processes, grow sales, improve service, manage projects, and control billing. Um, v Technologies are the creators of Starship and Shipgear. And they're both shipping automation solutions. Starship is a more enterprise-related solution in that you can rate shop with uh, different carriers uh, and get the best pricing for your shipments based on all the rules of the shipment. Um, and Shipgear is uh, limited to uh, FedEx or UPS, uh, so it's, um, it also helps you uh, gain uh, more automation with your QuickBooks solution. And uh, we're just going to review the workflow real quick here. Um, so the order comes in through a customer service person or a salesperson in results. And that order is uh, turns into an a, a order into QuickBooks. And then all that information about the order is sent over to Starship, which will take the, all the necessary information about the shipment, the location, the time it needs to be delivered, and find the best carrier to deliver the shipment and assign that sales order to a, a, a carrier. And then that, all that information will go back into QuickBooks and uh, then back into results. With, and then the, uh, the shipment will be shipped out. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Mike. Thank you, Mike. I'll make you a presenter here. There you go. Thank you. And thank you very much for that introduction. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. Um, <clears throat> What I wanted to do was just give you a real quick view of what Result CRM is. It's so it's a system that's designed to really manage the full workflow in the company in terms of managing the contacts, does have calendar and activities, sales and marketing, so you've got your opportunities tracking, you can create quotes, it does have project management, time and expenses all built in as well. With the QuickBooks integration, this creates a situation where, number one, you've got full visibility of your relationship with a particular client or, or prospect um, with respect to the activities. So when do I call them? When should I follow up? What are the opportunities? What quotes are out? And with the QuickBooks integration, you're then able to uh, combine it with the financial information. So what have they purchased in the past? What did they pay for it? Has it been paid for? All of that becomes visible in the same customer record in the CRM. It also extends the workflow flexibility. So with results, because we send information back to QuickBooks and in the way that we do, um, you're able to have users in the CRM who don't even have access to QuickBooks that can create transactions that are sent to QuickBooks. And we're going to demonstrate today how that functionality really closes the loop and in essence gives you a full almost enterprise level system when you've got things like uh, Starship connecting to QuickBooks as well. Um, so I'm going to just show you a uh, sample workflow. So let's say that I'm a sales rep or a customer service rep and somebody called LB Distributors calls in and, and hopefully you can see my screen. I've just got this universal search at the top where I can search for LB. I can, you know, don't even have to type it all in and their customer record pops up. So I can double click on that and this is a full customer record. I've got it opening with all of the available tabs, and users can limit that somewhat 
um, if they're more focused on just putting notes in or just the critical tabs. But I've got it set to open to the finances tab, which is quite normal. So this is an opportunity for me to see at a glance, year to date and history to date, you know, what this client has spent with the company. So it gives me a good idea of who they are. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good sized client. And if they've got a balance due. Um, within this record, I can see all their invoices. I can see invoice detail. So in the invoice detail, I can actually look at all of the line items from every invoice. And I could even sort on any of these. So I can see really what they've purchased in the past. And then I've got places to track the activities, the emails that go back and forth. So with the quick, I mean, with the Outlook integration, these emails become available within the CRM. So anyone that's looking at Bert Smith's record would be able to see the emails associated with them and could even open them from here. Opportunities, projects, etc. So today what we were going to do We've got Bert on the phone, and he's asking about, uh, wants a quote for some additional items. So I simply mark that active. Anything that's on a dropdown is in your control, so you can use the, the language that makes sense for your business. When I go to add items to this quote, we've got a couple of very quick, easy ways to add items. In this case, I'm choosing rapid add, which brings up all my various product lines. So um, I'll just go to favorites in this case, and he wants some tarps, so I'll put in you know, 15 tarps. He wants some screwdrivers, so we'll give him a couple of screwdrivers and some hammers. So I can come in and I could open others and add additional items to the, to the quote, but in this case, I'll just add those items, and from here, I can go ahead and actually email him this quote right from the record. And this is what a standard quote form, quote template looks like in results. We use Crystal Reports as the forms and uh, reporting tool in results, so this can be modified with logos and graphics and additional boilerplate if needed. From here, I can just click to email it, and it's automatically attached that quote as a PDF document right to this email. And I even had some standard text that I had included. And you can have, um, uh, you know, I can modify this. You can have a uh, email signature in view of Bert. And so now I can send him the quote. So I've sent. Bert that quote, and uh, I guess we'll we'll kind of fast forward a little bit. He's got the quote, looks good to him. He calls back, and doesn't matter who answers the phone, they'll be able to open Bert's record just like I did and find the quote that he's referring to, and I can right here convert it to an order. So I just converted that quote to an order. And in many cases, maybe, uh, maybe Bert was a prospect and I could change his contact type to a customer at this point because we got an order. If I did that, what would happen is the next time the synchronization occurs, and this is done as a batch process, so it's not constantly attached to your QuickBooks file. It simply wakes up on a timer at intervals so you can decide you know, different times of day perhaps or different intervals when you want the synchronization to occur. But what's going to happen is the customer information, if it didn't exist already, would be created in, result, in QuickBooks, I mean. And that sales order is going to automatically transfer into QuickBooks. And once that order transfers into QuickBooks, it's ready for shipping from QuickBooks. And I'll, uh, I think that's where Shiprush should take over, probably. I mean, Starship, I'm sorry. Thanks, Mike. 
Uh, this is Melissa from the Technologies. Um, thanks, Adrian, also for putting this together. Um, hopefully, everyone can see my screen here. So what you're looking at today is our Starship solution. This is our multi-carrier piece. It's designed to take errors out of your warehouse and front office if you're doing any double entry or even triple entry. We'll take over for that. That way you can process your shipments quickly, more efficiently. You'll see that you're able to ship with multiple carriers, and those do include any of the major parcel carriers, such as UPS, FedEx, the post office. We also work with some regional carriers and about 15 LTL carriers, such as uh, UPS Freight, FedEx Freight, and some of the other uh, LTL shippers, such as Conway, RNL. Um, so about a dozen to 15 of those that we offer a direct connection with. So you'll see here our shipping screen. Uh, right here is where you see the source. So your source is your QuickBooks sales order that Mike just created from results into QuickBooks. We can also, if you use invoices, sales receipts, or if you want to pull directly from a customer list, we work with any of those document types in QuickBooks. You can also see a quick view of which company file that you're connected to inside QuickBooks. I already have that running. So what we're gonna do today is ship off that sales order that Mike created for us. I'm gonna punch in the order number. You can also use our browse feature here to browse for an order. If you have scanning capabilities, you can scan that in also going to hit the enter key here and what this is doing is calling over to that QuickBooks sales order grabbing the shipping information so I just wanted to go over a few panels here um, you could see that we've automatically translated over the service level information this customer had asked for it to go UPS ground we'll bill it prepaid on our account number however you can set up the system to grab um, your UPS account number if you have that stored in QuickBooks um, pushing over from your CRM system and you also see here we grabbed uh, LB distributors from this order. This is the one that came from uh, results. We've also validated the address. Um, that's what this checkbox means right here. So green means good. Um, it's been validated. And we also know that this is a commercial uh, area. If it was residential, it would flag that also. Um, so the nice part of having Starship running is we'll, we'll grab not only the shipping information, but we can grab line items on there so you know exactly what's in each box. This is also useful if you wanted Starship to produce any documentation. Um, we can also print a packing slip um, if you're shipping international or LTL. We can grab that information to produce um, NAFTA agreements or um, the bill of lading. So let me just expand the items that are in this box. In this particular instance, I brought everything into one box. You can set up Starship to pack these items based on scenarios you've built in or conditions. What you can do here is also add additional packaging. Say you wanted to put these in two boxes instead. So what I'm going to do here is add another box. And I'm going to take these hammers and just drag and drop them into this box. Starship also has the ability to store package types. So if you have your own custom types that you want to store with dimensions, um, UPS and FedEx do require dimensions to be set up. So we'll set this as a medium box for this one. And we can also set this one to, we'll say, small box. So you'll see we have the dimensions stored here. We've brought in the weight. And what I'd also like to point out is our inventory system. We have a way to store information you may not see in QuickBooks. This is useful if you have uh, freight shipments. Say this was an LTL shipment, you needed the NMSC code. We can store that along with the freight class. This will make your shipments be produced quicker. That way there's no errors when you're grabbing the code. And you'll also see here that I have stored the description. This will all print out on your bill of lading. And then the same thing for international shipments. Say this was going to Canada, you'd have this information available for all the information that those forms typically require. And then if you wanted to store any additional information, say you needed a product image, you can store that here. And if you also wanted to um, have packaging scenarios, what this will do is take the items and pack them up automatically based on the scenarios that you've set up. So for example, say you wanted to store 10 items automatically into a vanity box, for example. This will pack 10 items into this box, has your dimensions stored, and will all already have the weight figured out based on your items. So we'll say yes, 
and that will be saved for next time. You'll see here a list of all the different items. This can either be populated through an Excel sheet. This will also learn as you ship these items. You'll see these get added to your inventory. So for this particular example, the customer has said, OK, I want this to go UPS ground. However, if they didn't indicate a certain way that they wanted it to go, if you were looking for a faster way or a cheaper way, we do have a rate shop utility that will let you run a rate shop. So I'm just going to run this here. Um, in terms of the accounts that you have, if you have negotiated rates with the carriers, we do connect into their web services or their APIs. So you will see their list rates versus your contract rates that you have set up with them. We can also take it a step further if you bill custom rates, if you add handling fees on based on the customer type, um, say for UPS ground shipments, you want to add an additional $5 per box, you can set up a rule to automatically do that. You can also set up rules if you wanted to decrease the shipping, give them free shipping based on some type of promo. And you could see the breakdown of the charges here. So we'll just take a quick look at this. Um, you could see the list rates versus contract. And I've actually set up a rule to add additional shipping charges on. This is based on our freight rules module. This will let me know that we're adding $5 per box added on. And you'll note here that the applied charges are going to be $29.92. So that's really all that you have left to do when you process these shipments. All the line items came over. We validated our address. You can either click this button here or hit the F5 as a hotkey. And what happens at this point is the shipping labels are produced. And I wanted to show you a few different options here. So what this is doing right now is printing our smart label. This is a combo of a shipping label on the left here. So you'll see the UPS ground information. We also have a way to print the packing slip on this right hand side. Um, so you'll see the four by six label here. You can also um, print this portrait versus landscape. Um, you have the ability to modify any of these templates with your company logo, uh, website information. Uh, coupon codes, whatever you'd like to put in there. And here's an example of just if you were using a thermal label. Um, we work with any thermal label uh, systems that have the Altron or Zebo language. So we'll print out the labels for these. Um, here's the second label for the second package using the smart label. The second one if you were just using the UPS thermal label. And this is also a packing list that you can uh, send out if you wanted this for the whole shipment. You'll see here I added our company logo. You can add um, number of packages, number of pallets. You'll see all the line items that we had on the shipment. And then I also added um, some verbiage at the bottom if you wanted to um, give out a coupon code for their next order. And what this has also done is updated QuickBooks with tracking and shipping. We offer a nice tool before I get into QuickBooks. It's called our dashboard tool. This is a nice tool for someone that doesn't have access to either Starship, QuickBooks, or CRM. This will give you information on uh, shipments that have been done through Starship. This won't take up any Starship user seats. This can be installed on anyone's uh, computer. So if you have a receptionist fielding calls on tracking information, or if you have um, customer service reps that just want to find a tracking number really easily, they can come in here. If they know the sales order number, we can look that up. Um, I'll pull up a, a previous shipment so I can show you that. So this is uh, sales order number 1226. You can easily search for it by customer name. Uh, if you have their PO number, you could do it that way also. And you'll see here the shipment information. You can see where it came from inside of QuickBooks, what carrier it got sent on. We also have the packaging that was used for the shipments. You can see the line items associated to this order, and then a breakdown of charges. And on top of that, we can also see the email that we sent to the customer. This will take place of any of the carrier provided emails. This will give you the ability to create your own templates. Um, you can put in your company logo. So let me make this a little bigger so you can see I've changed the subject line. This has come from my email address. So this customer has received that. And it gives you clickable links back to UPS, for example. Um, if you click on this, it'll take you to ups.com. They could track the package this way. You can put your um, 
URL to your website there, and they can see exactly what's in each package, uh, the description of the items, and the quantity that's been shipped. So what I'll do now, I'm going to go back into QuickBooks, and you'll see what we've sent back into the sales order. Let's see here. Let me refresh that. Okay. So you'll see here a new line item has appeared. Uh, when you're setting up the integration, you can choose whichever shipping code that you want to use. Um, for this example, I've used shipping. And you can also choose which type of line item details get sent back. You can choose tracking information. You can see the shipped on date. You can put uh, total shipment weight like I did carrier service level information. Um, you can also put things like of how it was billed, if it was billed on your account number versus the customer's account number. And you'll see here the shipping rate that has been applied back. That was the applied shipping rate, so it used the freight rules that I had set up. So you'll see here, like we had indicated on the order, it was the UPS ground shipment. So everything has been sent back. So at this point, what I'm going to do is create an invoice, and this should send it back over to results. So we have the invoice created, line items been brought over. So Mike, I think you take it from there. Thanks, Melissa. That was great. And uh, you're entirely correct. So <clears throat> once that order is filled and shipped, the invoice information then will automatically transfer back to results. So that means that um, if Bert calls up and the person that answers the phone it needs to be able to see whether it was shipped, when it was shipped, all that information, they'll find it right in his invoices. And when they look, they'll see that it was shipped. And a thing I like, this is just the invoice data. I don't have to print it or, or open the preview. I can just hover on that and see all the tracking information. Or I can look at the, uh, the invoice form itself and see it right there, what the invoice went out with. So now we've got all the tracking information along with the tracking charges, I mean the shipping and handling charges that were applied to that invoice. Um, <clears throat> I could even, in results, if I wanted to, so if, if uh, again, this is a flexibility in workflow, we can even process a payment right in results. So if I wanted to apply the payment, I can go ahead and uh, you know process it here, and it's going to apply it to that invoice. And again, when that synchronization occurs, the payment will go back into QuickBooks just the same way. So the idea, again, is to have uh, flexibility in being able to create transactions in the CRM without having to access QuickBooks, and then also see what changes have been made, like the shipping and the invoicing, right from the CRM. Just a few other things that you can do with results. So we've got a lot of capabilities in terms of tracking the documents and emails related to your clients. Um, I can, again, see all the quotes. When I've got emails here, I can actually open them right from the CRM, including the, the attachments. So I can see, even if this was an email that I didn't send, I'd be able to see it right there. Um, we've got a lot of other options. So wherever you see the word manage in results, when I click on it, it brings up what we refer to as the data management center. So this gives you the opportunity to see sort of the 20,000 foot view. In this case, I'm looking at invoices that came over from QuickBooks. So I can see in the CRM, which invoices have a balance due, and I can click on that column to bring the biggest ones to the top. So I've got the view of this client's 
invoice right in the CRM and I'm only ever one click away from their full customer record. So if I was following up and you know doing collections in essence out of the CRM, I can open the customer record, see when the last time somebody spoke with him was, what he said, all of that information becomes available to me as I'm making a call. The thing that I really like about this as well, and this is flexibility in terms of adding efficiency to your day, if I was tasked with following up on some overdue invoices, I can bring them up here, check off the ones I want to work on, and now when I click open, instead of having to bounce back and forth from my list, now I've got the phone that I'm going to call on the left and on the right I've got the invoice information. And again, if I've got, uh, if I'm John Sample, as the phone's ringing, I can click this button to open up his full record. I've still got my list here that I'm working on and I can see everything I need to about uh, his account. So. It really is a system that's designed to enable everyone in the company to get the full picture of the client interactions and at the same time has, has the efficiency built in to really uh, help you manage your as well as your receivables as you can see and ties it right together with the shipping and the invoicing. Um, so I really just was intending to give you a, a quick view of the system today. I hope that's helpful. And uh, I, I um, will we'll look for your questions. Thank you, Mike, uh, for that and Melissa. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the contact information on the screen uh, so that everyone can see that. Now let me make this show. There we go. You can probably see my questions. Always does that when I um here. There we go. So can you see my the contact information there? Yes. Okay. So we have a bunch of questions. Thank you, audience, for um for your participation. Um, it looks like we have the first question. I will be launching some polls here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the polls while we're announcing the questions. So if, you, if I could just ask the audience to answer these polls. Uh, are you interested in learning more about shipping automation? So if you could just take a moment to answer that. Let me pull up the questions here. Okay, so does each Starship user, this one's for you, Melissa, and uh, thank you, Maureen, for this question. Does each Starship user need to be logged in both QuickBooks and results, and does each user need an individual connection to each of those just using one QB login per Starship user? Thanks, Adrian. Yeah, I can uh, tackle that one. So Starship does require a user to be inside of QuickBooks. Um, you can limit the permissions that are inside of QuickBooks at that time. So you can um, bring down the permissions just to the ones that Starship requires. Um, I don't think that we would need to have results on that system. Um, Mike, I'll have you tackle that part of it. OK, so um, results does need to be on the same machine where the synchronization is taking place. Uh, you know, the one that's in, in, in initializing the synchronization, I should say. But um, it doesn't use a QuickBooks account. And the results users, because it's a separate database and we're actually transferring the information from QuickBooks into results and vice versa, results users do not need to have any access to QuickBooks. And they'll still be able to see that information and create transactions in results. Does, does that answer the question? 
I believe so. Maureen, if you have anything further along those lines, please feel free. We welcome um, a more elaboration if that didn't exactly uh, hit the answer you were looking for. Uh, what version of QuickBooks does this work with? Thank you, Tina. I'll start on the Starship side. It does require that you're on the enterprise level of QuickBooks, uh, version 13 or higher. Okay. As far as results, um, results will actually work with any 2009 or more recent Pro Premier or Enterprise. And we are actually just about to uh, release our new QuickBooks Online integration. So results is really designed to work with almost any version of QuickBooks, um, including UK and Canada, as well as the US. And I just want to remind the audience, I see 83% of you have voted. I'd love to see 100% voted. Are you interested in learning more about shipping software? We do have that poll up on the screen. And um, does Starship require a results login and a QuickBooks one? Thank you, Maureen. So you would be logged in as a QuickBooks user, then launch Starship. Starship does have their own seats that you would need to maintain in order to gain access to the software. does not require a results login. And does this software have the ability to import orders from e-commerce websites into the CRM software? Thank you, Bob. So that's a good question, Bob, and we've looked at that from time to time. Um, there is the possibility of doing so, but what we're finding is that similar to the way that Starship integrates with QuickBooks and, and then passes the information to results, most of the e-commerce sites have QuickBooks integration already, so they're sending the orders to QuickBooks where results is picking them up. And we have a question from Jeff. Jeff, uh, unfortunately, I missed most of the presentation. Will a recording of this webinar be available offline? Great question, Jeff. Yes. I am going to uh, Adrian Montgomery, Adrian at ERP VAR. Uh, if you uh, mark my uh, email as a safe sender, you will be receiving an email with the recording and the contact information of the presenters uh, by the end of the day today. So thank you, Jeff, for that question. And Barbara, uh, do I need web agility if I use your Starship and CRM? Thank you, Barbara. Um, well, web agility is another QuickBooks uh, third-party developer. They do have tools to integrate shopping carts to QuickBooks. Um, if you would like that type of capability, Starship itself does not require that type of integration. Um, it's nice if you can get your web orders into Starship some way so we can ship them for you, but you do not require web agility to work with Starship. And Maureen, thank you. Uh, does results integrate with Gmail yet? Is there a projected date for this integration to be complete? Okay. so. Um, I think that we're looking at rolling out the Gmail integration somewhere uh, probably in, from what I'm told, and these things sometimes come along quicker than anticipated, and as you know, sometimes take longer, um, but we are looking probably at the first quarter of 2016. We, we, currently, we currently integrate tightly with uh, Microsoft Outlook, so for Gmail users, uh, uh, best practice, I think, would be to have your Gmail feed into Outlook and in that way integrate it directly with your results. And uh, just want to remind the audience that I, we do have a poll up. If I could, uh, we're at 73% for this last final poll. We won't be asking any more of these from you. If you can, just take a moment just to answer. Are you interested in learning more about CRM, yes or no? That would be great. Um, what level of the process do you back order items that did not ship, and can you relay that information back uh, from Starship back to QuickBooks? Thank you, Megan. 
Um, I will take that question. Um, so Starship doesn't really uh, handle inventory control. You can see that type of information when you're doing the shipment. Um, you can put in the amount of uh, items in the order uh, versus the ones that are shipped. So you can see that type of information. However, we will not update that in the QuickBooks inventory. And I'm not seeing any more questions, uh, Mike and Melissa, right yet. I would like to hang on the line and see if, uh, if the audience has any more questions. Just to remind the audience, there's a question mark button and a hand button right next to your name on the webinar pane. If you click on that question mark, it will open up a dialog box and you can key in your question. That way I will read the question off for the presenters. And I just wanted to thank the audience so much for spending this time with us. We know uh, time is hard to come by, uh, so we really do appreciate it. And Melissa, Mike, thank you. This is uh, definitely a compelling topic. And I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll so everybody can see the uh, contact information on the screen. And you will be receiving uh, this information, you will be receiving this contact information and the recording at the, by the end of the day via email. Oh, we have another question here that just popped in. How would I get my web orders to Starship? Thank you, Barbara. Great, great question. So you would need some kind of feed from your web orders into QuickBooks. Starship can take it from there. Um, that tool should be able to also feed back tracking information once we place that into QuickBooks. Um, so they can either see that through your portal. We can always email the customer also with the tracking information from our eNotify system. So you have a few different ways to do that. Um, but there should be other developer tools out there that can bridge your QuickBooks and e-commerce together. And we have another question from Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. How can you get the V Technologies dashboard? We do not have Starship, which I understand we do not need. Is this correct? And what is the pricing of Starship? Um, so Starship would um, be the catalyst for having a dashboard tool that um, only feeds into the orders you've run through Starship to ship. Um, if you're one of our ship gear customers, we also offer a very similar tool. It's also called Dashboard. Um, that'll take all the orders that you ship through ship gear through um, UPS, FedEx, or the post office. You can see those. Um, tracking numbers, you can search for history through there also. You'll also see tracking information get sent back into QuickBooks. Um, pricing does vary based on your um, needs. So it's based on carrier. Um, we start at 1500 We can always take a conversation offline. Um, my contact info looks like it's still up with Adrian. Um, if you have any questions on that, I can put together a quote for you. And thank you, Cheryl, for that last question. I um, oh, I do see, oh, that was Nadia. Thank you, Nadia. I have a question from Cheryl. Cheryl, does uh, work with non-inventory items? Adrian, you cut out there for a minute. Can you repeat that? Um, this one's for Mike. Does results work with non-inventory oh. items? Uh, yes, it certainly can. So results is designed as a general business system, so it will address the needs for non-inventory items. If uh, you know they're one-offs, you can use it that way. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients that are in light manufacturing where every item is built to order, and so they use results for that. And uh, it also works with service items. So if you've got, you know, service items, those can also be converted to invoices and quotes and, and the like in results, just as we demonstrated. And Nadia, thank you again for this question. What is the average time of integration of Starship, Melissa? Uh, you should be fully integrated within a few weeks. Quicker if you um, do it on your own. We also offer install services. Um, usually there's just a lead time getting a technician assigned to you. They'll um, do the install. That'll be done within one afternoon. Um, we can send you the media, and the install is pretty straightforward, so you can be up and running pretty quickly. And also, uh, Melissa, you guys have some experts out there based on location, so Nadia, um, definitely contact Melissa, and Melissa, contact Nadia. 
uh, and there may be a possibility that uh, Nadia's reseller or a uh, um, certified QuickBooks consultant can help her out with that integration. And what is the pricing on results? Thank you, Lisa. Well, thanks for the question, Lisa. Um, results, uh, all of our pricing is actually on the website. And Lisa, if you'd like a specific quote or to discuss your situation, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, we have a very flexible pricing model, which includes month-to-month uh, -month or annual subscription pricing. In our subscription, there's no uh, time commitment, so if there's no uh, a lengthy contract. Um, the subscription pricing varies from about $25 per month up to around $59 per month for our uh, full enterprise system. Uh, we, we do have several products. We also offer one-time purchase pricing, which uh, varies from $3.95 per user on the standard CRM to $9.95 per user for our full field service uh, system. So again, uh, the pricing is on our website, which is shown there, results-software.com or results-crm.com. And again, I'll be happy to, uh, to provide you with personalized pricing. And we have another question. Thank you, audience, for all these questions. We have a question from Tina. If a customer is using results and QB in a hosted environment, does Starship have to also be hosted? Yes, yeah, so if you're in a hosted environment and your um, environment does allow for any outside software to be installed, you would uh, install that in the same area of your QuickBooks. And that is it so far for the questions. Uh, looks like we had a lot of uh, interesting questions come up here. So all of your questions will be recorded with your name, along with your name, on the registra registration report. So we will be getting back and just making sure everybody, all your questions were answered. And thank you so much again, audience, for spending time with us today. And Alyssa, Mike, great presentation. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Adrian, and thank you, everyone, for spending your time this afternoon with us. Thanks, everyone. All right, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.